Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video, and we are back with Silverstone Auctions at their Cywell Airdrome sale. This is with Supercar Fest, which is happening this weekend. Today is setup day, Thursday, so there's lots of activity going on in the background. Tomorrow, Friday, 19th, is viewing day, and the sale happens on the 20th. And so Saturday, everything is sold, the automobilia and the cars. And wow, there's a lot of cars here. I counted them up, 114 cars to get round now. Tom May, who's holding the camera, is gonna edit this down tonight. I won't be able to feature them all, but I'll do my best to pick out the ones I think of particular note in the sale. And I'm gonna kick off straight away with this. This is the E-Type. Now this is a Series 2 1969 built car, uh, registered 1970. And I'm picking this one out because it's not as it seems at first glance. Beautifully restored, this car, a few years ago. And then it went to Eagle and they have modified this car to GT specifications. So there's quite a lot on this car from Eagle. And we all know how much Eagle modifications cost. And I, what you look for for a restored car or, or a good E-Type is just the body fit. If you see that door, how tight those shot lines are around there, that is a good sign of a very good restoration. It's got five-speed gearbox, it's enhanced engine. You can tell from the outside it's got Eagle sort of widened track with wider uh, wheels, enhanced brakes, etc. And the really good news is there's got quite a trick number plate on it, 133EE on it. That goes with the car. Yes, it's guided at quite a high price, 240 to 280,000 pounds, but it had over 100,000 of restoration before it went to Eagle. So I just picked that one out because you don't often see an Eagle E type in the sale. Oh, something completely different and a car I know quite well a Bentley Continental R, 1993. And I just like the backstory of this one. It's, it's, it's a distinctive colour, shall we say. It's quite nice not to see one in black or grey or something. And this was a special order uh, by the CEO of Rolex. So this is 1993 and it's not many miles, 30,000 miles. Looks utterly beautiful inside, good service history. They're still very affordable, this car. They're quite a statement car and guided at 42 to 50,000 pounds. But one with that history of Rolex behind it, I think it's quite fun, that one. Now, where do we go next? Now, I just quickly wanted to show you this. This is the Ultima GTRs 2002, and it looks like an escapee from Le Mans. And the owner of this car who built it up has sort of made it a sort of Bentley-esque look from the Bentley racer from Le Mans. And I can't get over the effort he's gone to to do this. And if I look in the engine bay, he has Bentley rocker covers. It's a Chevrolet 6.3 litre engine in there. But if I look through there, it says Bentley. And I can see the oil engine oil filler is the same as uh, on my Rolls Royce Silver Shadow and Bentley of the period. Great big, I think they're Weber IDA carburettors on top. 400 horsepower, I'm told, to power about a tonne of Ultima GTR. A very exciting car um, that, yeah, you're going to be noticing this and it's guided at 45 to 50,000 pounds. We've seen this uh, land, this is just a little coupe um, S4 land. People want the convertible ones, but it's super tidy. It all looks very original on its original tyres. I want to head this way, really. I'm not going to feature this, but yeah, it's nice to see a Ford RS500. They, they were limited to 500 cars. There's 100 and, 10 in right hand drive and they all came in that matte paint and this one ha has been driven 38,000 miles and guided at 55 to 65,000 pounds nice looking very low mileage Gallardo there but I just want to get to these two here this 550 and this Gallardo here now it's a perennial favorite the 550 as if you followed Evo, I owned one for some time. I did 30,000 miles on it, and it is the definitive GT car manual gearbox. All of the 550s have it, and it's a very livable Ferrari. The, the good news is quite a few around, and therefore the values haven't really taken off. But this is looks absolutely stunning, beautifully looked after, and relatively low mileage. You know, 24,000 miles. This one, it's 1998 car, so we're talking about 25 years old now. So 1,000 miles a year, 
and this one is guided at 90 to 100,000 pounds. But it does look one of the sharpest 550s I've seen in a while. But look at this Gallardo. Now, Lamborghini Gallardo, yes, there's quite a few around, but some of them have lived pretty hard lives, and some of them are spec like I couldn't really buy one. But look at this one, so sharp, shows off the style of the Gallardo. It was always a good looking car. And it's extremely easy car to live with, with a Lamborghini name. Uh, it's so different to say to my Countach or Diablo or something. This one, lovely. Um, decent sized boot in the front. V10 soundtrack wherever you go. And this one is 24,000 miles from new, 2007. Looks absolutely beautiful and guided at 62 to 70,000 pounds. I think if you got that for that money, that would be a good buy. Where should we go next? Let's go have a look in the tent. I'm going to kick off with this Lotus Esprit. So this is the S3. This is the, um, very similar to the Esprit I had. I think they look great in white. The Zizario Esprit like this. This has had uh, yeah, one owner for 34 years and has done 73,000 miles, but all documented, etc. A calmer interior. It's quite a nice interior in blue. It's got the optional roof on it um, that lifts out. You've got to remember these are convertible and it stores in the front. I was very taken to how well that glass roof worked and it is guided at 35 to 40,000 pounds. Now, there is also some cars here from the Ferrari Owners Club. So there's a number of Ferraris in here. And what gets me about this little collection is they're all manual transmission. So there's a super tidy 360 here manual very low mileage, 4,700 miles and guided at 100 to 120,000 pounds because of the low mileage. But yeah, super smart. Or this manual GT3 Touring, not a car I expected to see in the sale. I actually know the owner of this car. I'm amazed that he's selling it. But if you wanted a 992 GT3 Touring at, at an auction, here you go. Guided at 175 to 210 thousand pounds so a lot of money but a very sought after car or oh, what about this i quite like this one as well because this is a um, 360 convertible and it's got the proper seats on it and it's manual and it's cheaper than the low mileage one there i think this is guided at 70 to 90 thousand miles and mileage is 17 thousand miles so lots of choice there i'm looking at that ferrari california there do i feature that or not I just think they're a very usable Ferrari, electric roof, etc. And they've sort of stopped depreciating. They sit at, this one's guided at 75,000 miles. So this is guided at 75,000 pounds and mileage is 19,000 miles. Not quite so sure about the color, but uh, yeah, I just think it's one to watch. If you want a usable Ferrari, that's not a bad bet. I quite like these two cars here as well. I always have to stop by an RS200. It's such an arresting sort of Ford, mad product from the, from the period. This one is being restored 8,000 miles from new, obviously a, a proper road going one, only being used on the road. And just rare to sort of find one as tidy as this. But it was, um, yeah, it was the form of the property of Alan Fenwick, director of the RS200 Owners Club. So that's probably why it's very tidy. The guide on it is 240, 280,000 pounds. And it comes with various spares. But he also had tucked up in the attic, Look, a spare body for his RS200. So you could, if you wanted, change the colour of it and change the panels and have this and just pop it on the car. This is guided at 10 to 12,000 pounds. So you get the complete package if you wanted to. I still love the look of the Lotus Esprit. This is the S4, this is the V8 one. Um, SE facelift, it says 2003 and sort of last of the line. Looks very good in this colour and this is guided at 60 to 70,000 miles, 18,000 miles from new. There's a number of Maserati. I'm not gonna do the Ghibli here. I want to have a look at the Mrak down here, but just passing by, look at this Jensen. Yeah, 1970 Jensen Interceptor, the um, Series 2, automatic. Doesn't look as though it's been res restored, but the body looks quite sharp proper wheels on it and they're guided at 40 to 50 thousand pounds but from the outside that looks to me worth a look but what about this M Maserati Mirac SS I drove one of these recently and I was very surprised 
how well it drove and how usable it was. This was the era of a little bit of Citroen as well, so it's got the power brakes, um, it's a manual one, this one, and the power steering, etc. Quite a revy th uh, three litre V6. It was in hearts, it was bigger than the V6 they put in the Citroen SM. They in hearts it for this. This is an SS version, which you note because of this vent here. And this has been um, looked after by Bill McGrath, who are the people to go to in the UK. So I imagine there's quite a file and some quite chunky bills, but it looks super smart and 47,000 miles from new, guided at 40 to 45,000 pounds. So many cars to cover. Let's head down into the field. There's a few cars here to look at. I think this is interesting because this is a pre-production Aston Martin Vanquish. So this is 2001 and this is yeah, first registered on the V5 to Aston Martin Lagonda, the only keeper. And 642 miles from new. So madness really where do these cars live all this time for the last 22 years because of that and its history yeah, it's guided at 100 to 115,000 pounds if you want the very earliest vanquish unused there you go or this is, I quite enjoy these these are such sleepers this is an SL 65 so an AMG V12 Roadster with 604 horsepower can't tell from the outside, but this car can do 0 to 100 miles an hour in seven and a half seconds. Automatic, everything works, cruise along, and then you just see off anything in it. And uh, yeah, what's that one guided at? Yeah, 50 to 60,000 pounds. Pretty rare car, that. Not as rare as this Allard, though. What a mad machine this is. You look at it and you just can't work it out. We've just lifted the hood up. This is a one piece giant bit of bodywork that hinges up to reveal a Cadillac V8 <laughs> sitting there and rear drive. And it was all about handling. Look how streamlined it is. And then, whoa, oh, I've always liked those Morris Thousand Travelers. Let's put some wood on it, etc. Turn dash aluminium on the inside and a great big so I don't know if it's got seven seats, but it seems to have a lift up panel there. It, if you come round to the back, Tom, you would swear blind this was a Morris Traveller until he lit up the, the V8 and then showed you the way this car can move down a road. Good Lord, it's even got side repeater indicators, those little stalks that come out there, which also came on the Morris. What is this one guided at? So 1953 Allied P2 Safari Estate, guided at 35 to 45,000. As I often say, go find another. Now, another car behind Tom I wanted the feature was this Aston Martin Vanquish again, but this is the ultimate edition. So this is the very last edition. And amazingly, this is unregistered, this car, uh, 522 kilometres from new. It had a period in Q8. It went out to Q8 and they didn't drive it, but they did reupholster the interior and they turned it all yellow. <laughs> look at that, you need sunglasses to look inside this car. It's yellow throughout. It wouldn't cost that much to sort out and put it back to standard if you're not that keen on the yellow, and I'd quite understand. But yeah, it's an unused Vanquish Ultimate, uh, 150 to 170,000 pounds. Now, I just want to show you these two Bentleys. These are very collectible these days. These are the Bentley Continental R Fastback. Uh, sort of by Mulliner, the body was done on these and it was um, to make it go through the air quicker and increase the top speed. These were 120 mile an hour cars in a day and yeah for a four-seater car that was quite something in the early 50s and it's just the elegance of this period of Bentley. Look at this door handle that is a one-piece bit of chrome there that swoops out and then there's your press here and if I look on there it has Yale on it just like your front door. Now that one is automatic and the, gear, the column change on it. You just look at the rear, look at that styling, so distinctive. And that one looks super original. You know, it's like the, it's slightly faded bodywork, looks very good inside. It's guided about 450, 500,000 pounds, so a lot of money, but not as much as this one, which is even smarter, absolutely crisp. And what makes this one so rare 
is it's a manual. And I once had a drive in one of these with Dr. Pefkin when he was running Bentley, and I couldn't get over where they put the gear change. If you chose a manual transmission on your Continental R of this period, they put the gear change there, that you sort of wriggled past every time you got in and out of the car. Which I, not, why not in the middle? I have no idea, but uh, I thought, what a peculiar place. So I'd never seen another car like it with a gear change sat on the floor that you have to, it right in the way when you get in and out of it. Anyway, that one's much more expensive. I think that one is guided at 600 to 700,000 pounds, but just a beautiful, stylish Bentley of the 50s. I quickly wanted to show you this because I have a bit of a soft spot for Morgan. They're so British and iconic, and there's a very enthusiastic group of owners who have them. But this is a plus four, and it's 1994, and that means it's a plus four with the wide body. It looks just like the plus eight, the better looking one and it's a two-seater version. So it looks the iconic Morgan. And I think these are really good value. This one is 21,000 miles from new, has the two-liter Rover engine in it, um, and you, it's guided at 20 to 25,000 pounds. It's always going to be worth 20 to 25,000 pounds. So if you want cheap Morgan motoring, I think that's a very good bet. Now, I just wanted to show you this 944 because I've never seen one from 1988 that looks as good as this one. So this is a 2.5 Lux uh, pinstripe interior, so typical of the period, and 5,000 miles from new. Good and goodness know where they find this car. Two owners from new and just looks stunning. It's lovely to see one in this sort of condition. I mean, it's guided at 35 to 40,000 pounds, but they were a really good driving Porsche back then. You know, four, four cylinder front engine and then a transaxle gearbox, beautiful handling, sort of grunty. And I have fond memories of this in period, and I've never seen one like that. And I've never seen one of these before, actually. I've, I've seen them in books, but this is the Fiat Dino Coupe. Now, there's a convertible version of this, but Tony did it, and they had completely different body shells, but they both had the Ferrari V6 from the Dino. Uh, this one is absolutely smart. I can't get over the condition of this one. Um, this is guided at 50 to 60,000 pounds. 1969 that was. We forget Fiat used to produce cars like that. And another favourite of mine is this one. Now this is the 1976 Ferrari Dino 308 GT4. I had a 308 GTB as you know, but I've always reckoned that the GT4 is the better handling of the two. And I think the looks are coming into vogue. I like the sharpness of it. The only car that Batoni designed for Ferrari, and they were everybody was a bit sniffy of them when back in the day because it wasn't a Pininfarina design. But now I think it's extremely useful. It looks super sharp. This looks great red, and it's got that sort of black tail finish on it as well. Um, 67,000 miles and guided at 40 to 50,000 pounds. I haven't looked at the full condition of it, but just a quick glance around it, it looks really good to me. Two Alphas I want to show you. This is the first one. This is a step nose dated from 1965, Sprint. And the guy who um, built this car up basically wanted an Alpha Holitz car. Um, but he saw the waiting list for it and said there must be a better way. So during lockdown he found a partly restored car and they then gave it to some Alpha experts in the Netherlands and they built in this car and it's just wonderful. 210 horsepower coming from its fuel injected twin spark head but it's got those generally bo uh, throttle bodies they look like Weber carbs on it completely stripped out 910 kilos I'm told this car weighs. It cost him about 200 thousand euros to get it to this condition and for some reason after 4,000 miles it's up for sale now this being a, a, I think it's a German registered car it will have to be imported to the UK and there'll be 5% VAT to um, pay on it but it is guided at 100 to 140 thousand pounds so quite a wide estimate but about half the price you would pay for an Alpha Holix one and it's probably just as good but looks looks really good Good. Now, the other one I want to show you was this one. This is a 1969 Alfa Romeo 1750 GTV, but this one has been doing sort of um, road rally type of events 
um, as therefore it's fully kitted out. There's a roll cage in it, um, there's uh, trick seats in it, etc. But I am told all the standard parts come with it and it's very healthy and has been hugely enjoyed. So 91,000 miles. Um, so you could either put it back to sort of road condition, etc. But if you do want to enter some of the uh, events this car is eligible for, and there are loads, this will be a very good starting point, and it is guided at 45 to 55,000 pounds, so half the price of the of the step nose. Now here's, here's a car, there are a lot of fast forwards in this tent. I could do RS500s, Codsworths, uh, RS500 Escorts over there. I love those Lotus Cortina Sunbeams as well. I, I, there's just too many to do, another Cosworth over there. This one, I, I just want to show this, it's, it's, it's a bit of a, um, not everyone's cup of tea, shall we say this one, but it's one car that I never knew actually existed. I knew Carmen Gear existed, knew those, but this is the Sport Edition. And the Sport Edition got extra bits of paint. It doesn't seem to get any more performance, uh, but it got these trick wheels that I always thought were a, an op, a, a sort of aftermarket wheel. But according to the catalogue, those were fitted to the Sports Edition. Never seen one before. Twenty-five to thirty thousand pounds. Left-hand drive, obviously. But uh, I, I can't imagine Sport. If it hasn't got any more horsepower, why is it a Sport? But it's just the way it looks. Now, it's not often you see a proper original Ford Cortina from this age. So this is 1965, the Mark I Cortina, infamous uh, car with Jim Clark obviously racing it, etc. But this is unconverted, unmolested, a road car sold by the Ford dealer and someone has enjoyed it for its last 58 years. It, it is documented this is an original because there's a lots of fakes out there, but this one isn't. And you only have to look inside and some of the stickers on the windscreen to see this is as they were from the dealership, even the sort of non-sport seats. I love that aluminium dash, the six and a half thousand rev line and that very distinctive wood wheel you got on Mark I Cortinas. This one is guided at 45, this one is guided at 45 to 50,000 pounds, which is about ballpark for a proper original one. Now, this car was a bit of a hero when I was growing up. This is a Ford Cortina Savage, and it's Savage because they put V6 engines into your regular Cortina. Now, this was a 1600E, I think, converted, yeah, 1600E, so it's got the four dars across the front and this huge scoop which feeds the v6 mighty v6 about 140 horsepower so it's not exactly a wild road weapon but uh, just lovely to see in this sort of condition a four door they got them in two doors as well and the old wabesco sort of sunroof on it i quite like this 94,000 miles and 40 to 50,000 pounds i've never seen one in an auction before though I was just about to feature this car and then a Spitfire decided to take off. So if you can hear Spitfire noise in the background, that's what's going on. It seemed very appropriate. Well, I was just about to show you this, the Bentley Turbo RT. I love these cars. I uh, love them more than I should, really. If you've ever ridden in one of these, this era, it's 97, this car, Bentley uh, uh, Turbo, they are just exquisite cars. You just feel you're a millionaire just sitting in it and just the finish of it and the way everything works on it. And then this turbo push and the RT, this one, had the ultimate engine that ever went into a Bentley turbo, which is the 400 horsepower engine from the Bentley Continental T. And I love the colour of it. It's purple. It's a very subtle purple. And it's not that many miles, was it? Uh, 38,000 miles from new. Uh, it went into a collection and unfortunately it wasn't really touched. So it needs a little bit of recommissioning, but the body looks super smart. And this is the age when they actually got galvanized under body as well. So they don't rust nearly as badly as early Bentleys and Rolls Royces. But uh, this one is guided at 20 to 25,000 pounds. And if you buy it, can I borrow it, please? Because I'd really like to go in that. Crazy thing after doing that Bentley and the price of it, there's a much more expensive Renault Clio William sitting beside it. But this is 41,000 miles from new, utterly pristine. I looked inside and the, yeah, the upholstery is bang on, the bolsters, etc. They were fabric trim in this age and uh, 41,000 miles from new and guided at 30 to 40,000 pounds. They are getting very collectible, the little Clio Williams, and that's a phase one as well. 
And this is a phase one Clio V6 silver. When this rocked up the first time outside Evo's offices, we just couldn't believe the madness of it. What were Renault thinking? It was obviously Tom Walkinshaw who did it. And then we sort of discovered it's unusual handling behavior, etc., and that it had spun even before you thought you were gonna spin. But great soundtrack with these, sort of lumpen sort of feel, just sort of slightly unsorted. But then you got out and then you think, wow, I've got this really very special car here. And we did miles, I did went to France in one as well. So they are usable, but they're very distinctive. 55,000 miles, this one, guided at 27 to 32,000 pounds. Or bringing us bang up to date, a Yaris GR, first one I've seen in an auction. Um, this one's pretty low mileage, 2,200 miles, got the circuit pack on it. We're still really enjoying ours, and uh, they're never going to produce a car like this again, although they say that GR to um, Toyota will continue with it, but I can't see how they can do something as wild as this with its three-cylinder um, turbocharged engine, 200 and some horse, I've forgotten exactly how much it is, but it is just a delight and a usable Toyota that only the consenti know what it is. You just tell people you've got a Toyota Yaris and then you just bomb down the road. Uh, this one is guided at 28 to 32,000 pounds. There are a lot of Japanese sort of specials here. Various super impressive Codsworth, this one, the CS400, quite a rare one. I, I just haven't got the time to go through them. They're all detailed on Silverstone Auction website. Skyline R34, the V-Spec one, 70 to 80,000 pounds. Why didn't I buy one when they were 25 to 30,000 pounds? Oh, an R32 there. Anyway, but I wanted to show you this. This is an F430 Chinese race car that's been converted for road use. This has number plates on it. Um, 430 Challenge, 2006, and it's 18,000 miles this is done. But yeah, if you want a road registered um, F430 Challenge, well, this one is guided at 85 to 95,000 pounds. What a statement car that one is. Now we're going to head over this way because I've just heard a very important car has arrived and we're going to have a look around that and that is the TVR Speed 12. I haven't seen this car since about 2004-05. I did an interview with Peter Wheeler because I just want to know the backstory to the, to the Cerberus Speed 12, how it came about and why it can the project. And in his typical gruff sort of Yorkshire sort of accents, he sort of said, well, it was hopeless. It was an absolutely hopeless road car. He says he took it home. He had a, the best commute of anyone I knew. He lived in the trough of Boland, factory in Blackpool, and every night it was about a 40 mile hoof back into the trough of Boland, which is a beautiful part of Lancashire. And he chose which car to take. And the day he took this one out, he said to me, within 300 yards, I knew it was bloody hopeless. And he said he just couldn't use the power. He tried all gears, fourth gear, still spun up, just he said no tyre technology. And then he started to worry because he said, hang on, I've got 40 miles to go and he's only got a bag tank. Am I actually going to get, have I got enough petrol to get home? So he basically gave up on it. And that was unfortunately the death knell for this Speed 12 to be a road car. Let's go right back to the 90s. He'd seen how well the McLaren F1 GTR had done at Le Mans and over probably a, a glass or two of red said we could go to Le Mans with a monster car, road car, and the regulations back then allowed it. And that was the sort of germ of the idea. This was going to race at Le Mans, this ultimate TVR racer. How do we get the power to compete with an F1? I'll tell you what, we'll bolt two engines together, that'll do it. And then the, the story, the infamous story about the dyno, that they bolted the two together. And he said it was about five, six, 5,700 revs and ping, the input shaft broke on the dyno. So then they thought, what do we do here? Well, we'll just do it as two engines and bolt them together when we actually put it in the car. 
You also have to remember it was actually going to breathe through restrictors, so it's not the 900 and the something horsepower that this one puts out. It was rated at about 675 horsepower, they expected, using the restrictors. Anyway, so that's the backstory to this car, and it still looks magnificent. No one does styling like TVR, no one has their backstory in this madness, this Britishness, men in sheds. This is the ultimate expression of it for me. Utterly wild, sounds glorious. It's, um, it's not a straightforward car just to get in and jump in and start and off you go. There's a bit of a starting position, it's almost like an F1 car, but there is a huge amount of interest in this car and I'm not surprised. There is only one road car, here it is. We actually tested it at Evo, there was one issue where we put the Sagaris and the Speed 12 on the cover, John Barker drove it on track and it was just addictive, he said, the power. What a sign-off it was. So this is in the sale, the Suicide Auction sale this Saturday. This is the star turn. What's it going to fetch? Who knows? Anywhere between 300 and 500,000 would be my guess because it is a one-off and we all have a passion for TVR. There's other cars in there. I haven't had time to go all round the cars. There's an unbelievable a, a escort of a Ford Cosworth Escort that has no miles on it, hasn't even had a front number plate screwed onto it. That's hiding in that shed, but it's too dark to film in there. If you want to know more about a sale, well, go onto the Silverstone website. You have to register to bid. You can watch the sale live this Saturday. That's on YouTube, etc. But there's all sorts of temptations here. As I hope you've enjoyed this sort of run round, my pick of the lots on sale this Saturday. If you have, well, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.